I'm going to present uh, some uh, lessons learned by our experience on uh, measuring the environmental footprint of the, of the food. And uh, I build up on, on uh, most of the <laughs> slides that <laughs> Gerard presented before because uh, those are very interesting also for my speech. Uh, so I also uh <laughs> change a little bit the, the, the title of my first slide to what will be the title of the following speakers. Uh, Stefano will talk about the unbearable lightness of uh <laughs> organic food. I am talking about the unbearable heaviness of food in terms of environmental impacts. And uh, build upon uh, the last um, point that we discuss is the complexity. I will show you with a picture what is the complexity that is behind uh, a glass of milk, like, as an example. And uh, also, uh, I will give also an information about where the carbon footprint of uh, uh, is originated, is born in a, in a life cycle of the of the milk. Uh, one mm, point that I will want to, to touch is also the importance for retailers. The importance in retailers for the environmental uh, footprint of the food products. And uh, the focus of my message is the how we can uh, allocate in a fair way the responsibility into the value chain, because we will learn that uh, the environmental impacts are born in different stages of the value chain, but also the economic value of the chain is not so fair allocated sometimes. Uh, finally, I try to speak about how the environmental footprint can help in this uh, problem, how we can uh, move towards a more sustainable uh, food system and uh, in a fair allocation of the responsibility. So let's start with the unbearable heaviness of food. We learned from uh, Caroline uh, a lot of environmental impacts, for example, of uh, livestock. And uh, this is just uh, a list of the environmental impacts that uh, normally we measure when we talk about the environmental footprint of uh, food. And so just to give uh, a key message from the environmental impact of food is that, uh, I'm sorry, it's missing one slide. No? OK. Uh, let's go back. Uh, what we can learn from this is that uh, we, we, cannot, uh, we cannot waste the food because behind the food there is always uh, a, a, a strong environmental impact. So any food wastage is really a, 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 an environmental problem. It's not only a te an ethical aspect, but it's also a lot of environmental impacts that can be avoided anyway. So this is the first lesson. The complexity. This is a, a simplified uh, scheme of a life cycle for producing uh, meat and uh, milk. You can see that there is uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, other co-products. For example, we have uh, together with the milk and, uh, and the meat, we have, uh, for example, leather or manure that can be used as a fertilizer. So there is, in terms of uh, products that the livestock can produce, there, is a, a multiple, uh, there are multiple products. This is uh, just one source of complexity. So how can we allocate to each product the environmental impact of the overall system? The other aspect is that the technological relations are very complex. And so we need to understand that for each of these, uh, of these simple box, uh, we need to understand what are the interaction with the environment. So for all different uh, 15 environmental impact indicators, so this is uh, an additional complexity. Moreover, we are talking about only about environmental impacts, but we learn from uh, Caroline that uh, sustainability is also very important in, term, in terms of uh, social and economic aspects. So those are another major source of complexity. So we cannot avoid to face the complexity. We need to work on it. We need to live on it. And so we need to, to find how to live with this complexity. Communication. We can simplify the communication. This is an example of a very simplified communication. This is a, a glass of milk. 
and the percentage of uh, the carbon footprint, uh, the uh, emission of uh, climate uh, greenhouse gas emissions from uh, uh, the overall system, where they are originated. And we can see again that the farms is the, the most important uh, aspect. And in uh, some cases we discuss a lot, at least here in Italy, but uh, that was very common in Europe some years ago about the discussion. What is the better bottle uh, for the milk? It's better the, the glass, uh, returnable glass, or the tetra pack, or the, or the um, polyethylene terephthal PET bottle, and so on. Uh, indeed, it doesn't matter so much, because we are talking about some small percentage of difference in something that is just uh, a, small, uh, a small percentage of the overall impact. So the message is we need to focus on what, is re what really matters. In this case, is the farms, the farm. So uh, retailers. OK, retailers, uh, they are a very important uh, actor. Uh, this is uh, a picture that show, of course, uh, a lot of environmental impacts for a fictitious retailer. That is uh, uh, a, a virtual retailer that can uh, satisfy the demand of uh, 3, 000, 3 million uh, people in Europe. So they are selling all what uh, 3 million people in Europe are buying every year. And so they are 350 retail uh, shops and so on. But what I want to, to focus here is that, uh, I hope that uh, there is the, okay, yes. In red, uh, you can see here what is the direct impact of the retailers in terms of uh, shops, in terms of uh, distribution, in terms of uh, logistics, in terms of uh, research and development, in terms of uh, what, uh, what need to function the organization. What is in yellow and in blue is the environmental impact uh, of the products they are selling. So we can see that the environmental impacts of the retailers are really um, determined by their product portfolio. And uh, here we can see, again, the, for the global warming potential of the food products uh, sold uh, for, mm, for 3 million uh, people in Europe, that again, more than 80% of the overall environmental impact uh, is uh, for food products. So food products uh, is, uh, in terms of global warming potential, counts roughly about 80% of the overall uh, uh, carbon footprint uh, of, uh, uh, of the overall products that are um, consumed in one year in Europe. So again, it's very, very important to talk about uh, the environmental footprint of food. It's really important. And we can see here that uh, there are in, uh, in uh, meat and uh, meat alternatives is the light blue. And uh, in dairy products, uh, the dark blue. And so those are very important. So talking about livestock is really an important issue. If you, we look at the value chain, so we have uh, the, the, the producers, the farmers, the transformers, we have the retailers, and finally we have the consumers. I'm sorry, this is the last version of, the, of my presentation, it's not the, the last one. Anyway, what I want to say here is that uh, the environmental impact uh, is mainly originating the farm stage, a little bit less uh, in during the processing, very small uh, in the retailer shops. And uh, okay, consumers indeed, uh, it can be depending on what type of food is, because the use phase can be really important in some cases. For example, for pasta, it accounts for 50%. Boiling the water for cooking the pasta is almost half of the uh, environmental impact uh, of the overall uh, life cycle. But the money, the, the, the money that is exchanged from consumer to retailers is normally high amount of money. And what goes to the producers is normally really a small percentage. Uh, if I don't remember, mm, mm, 
I knew that some number, for example, for the milk uh, to the producers goes about 45 cents of euro, and uh, at the supermarket I buy one liter of um, 1.5 euro. So it's uh, <laughs> it's a different type of. So okay, this is my key message. We need to to solve the environmental problems. We need to see the overall uh, value chain. And the actors in the value chain, they have uh, different responsibilities in terms of uh, environment, environmental impacts that uh, they are originating, but they have also different responsibility in, term, in terms of values they, they get from what they do. And so my personal opinion is that the more powerful actors, uh, in particular the policy makers, because they have the, the, the major power, should support the primary producers and also especially the small and medium enterprises and farmers that can implement uh, in this way effective mitigation strategies. Otherwise, there is no possibility that the, 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 the weakest part of the overall chain can solve the problem for all the chain. Okay. We cannot manage what we don't measure. This is almost true. We can manage also something that is uh, also understand uh, in terms of the uh, qualitative aspects. But normally, if we measure, we can manage. So environmental footprint uh, is a really powerful tool. Life cycle assessment is a really powerful tool because it can measure the environmental impacts where they are originated, where they are born. And so we can uh, identify the hotspots. We can uh, understand uh, where these uh, critical environmental aspects are born, and so we can uh, assess uh, potential improvement associated with management and technological intervention. We can support with the environmental footprint the policy measures, and so the policy measures should promote and drive the changes in the overall the chain. We need to empower the consumers in terms of both public and private consumers, giving them uh, a good information, environmental information, so they can uh, have, uh, uh, do better informed choices. But uh, we have also a very important specific role for retailers. They can pull the innovation in production and transformation, and they can push the consumers towards more sustainable habits and diets. So, concluding remarks. Envirom environmental footprint uh, is very, very important to, m to measure and compare different uh, systems, different uh, technologies. The supply management, uh, chain management uh, is very important in order to have uh, a fair value distribution and a fair responsibility allocation among the actors. There is uh, a lot of uh, margins for improvements and uh, I am personally convinced that for example, traditional products and practices can be really very much improved with uh, the scientific knowledge that is now available. We are now involved, for example, in one uh, Horizon 2020 project that is dealing with uh, traditional vari variety of tomato, and we try to understand how we can improve this traditional uh, variety of tomatoes in order to be commercialized and to be distributed uh, to the public and uh, to use the really most uh, advanced scientific techniques including uh, genetics including uh, uh, social science because uh, with um, we, we okay a lot of social uh, scientific aspects can be used really used in order to improve the um, the production and distribution of these uh, traditional varieties policy makers of course uh, I am looking <laughs> to Ricardo as a representative of the uh, Italian Ministry of Environment. They can, uh, they can have a, a really major role in terms of uh, supporting, implementing uh, measures, supporting measures for, for helping the weakest actors, the producers, the small medium enterprises, and the consumers, because the consumers, they don't have uh, the information, the right information. So we need to deliver them the right information. Retailers, they are really a key actor. They can act uh, as a really strong 
chain between producers and consumers, helping the producer and transformers in eco innovation activities and promoting sustainable life cycle in consumers. And consumers can make uh, better informed choices, change the unsustainable life cycle, lifestyle and diet, and of course reduce food waste. That's all. Great, thank you. Paolo, thank you very much.